Studio 212, Com check. DPS, go. Inco, go. PUS, go. Surgeon, go. Booster, go. Copy that, we have a go from you guys. This is talking sound. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Talking Sound Podcast, coming to you from the trade show floor of the Texas Association of Broadcasters here at the JW Marriott in Austin, Texas. I am more than excited to be back, A, at a live trade show, B, to see all the exciting new technology coming out from the vendors this year. Let's hop on in and check it out. Have you considered starting a podcast? Looking for a way to make your business a voice of authority in an industry? Then Podcast Cadet is the solution for you. Whether starting a podcast for yourself, your brand, business, school, church, or just plain fun, Podcast Cadet is here to help you navigate the waters of the podcast industry. Specializing in one-on-one -on -one consultation and training with industry professionals in fields ranging from podcast technology and editing to distribution, monetization, and even social media strategies, Podcast Cadet tailors their services to the specific needs of you and your podcast. Do you already have a podcast and trying to find ways to engage and grow your audience? Sign up for your Podcast Cadet audit today. And let us help you explore new and exciting ways to leverage your content and elevate your podcast brand to whole new levels. From consultational workshops to affordable podcast production and maintenance packages, Podcast Cadet is your one-stop shop for everything podcast related on the internet. Visit podcastcadet.com today to sign up for your consultation or training and use code TALKING20 to save 20% off your entire purchase. That website again is podcastcadet.com. We are here with Nicole at the Panasonic booth at the Texas Association of Broadcasters. Tell us a little bit about some of the new technology coming out from Panasonic this year. Well, we have uh, here the Cairo system, which you, have, you see the physical board, but you also have the GUI which is our creator, the Keras creator, GUI. Um, we had the 1000 launch earlier this year, and then um, later th this year, other features are going to be coming out, um, and upgrades for Canvas features for different screens and streams, and um, we are continually upgrading the product and uh, optimizing bandwidth and things like that. Um, yeah, and especially with everything being mostly computer today, not a lot of hard switching, things like that. The interface for this is absolutely amazing. Tell us a little bit about the customization options, things like that that you have going on here. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take Let's that one. Okay. Hi, I'm, I'm Frank. Frank, uh, welcome. Hi, hi, Chris. So basically, Keros, uh, like Nicole said, is an entirely ITIP based system, right? So we've taken away from the traditional FBGA based system uh -huh. and we're moving into a server based system. So at the core of our system, we have a CPU, GPU based processing engine. And that's what we do with our care system. So we have two, as you can see here, we have a hardware panel, which is completely optional. Yep. And we have a software panel, a soft panel, which is essentially a GUI into yep. our system and it controls everything, right? The strength of our system is that it's network based. As long as you can establish a network connection between this PC and wherever it is that your server is located, you can control things. So it kind of enhances that remote TD concept, the Remy model of working things, yeah. where you can take a network-based controller, you can send them, so the multi-viewers that you see over there, currently it's being sent over DisplayPort directly from the server, but you can send that over any type of streaming. So we support SRT, oh, wow. RTP, RTMP, RTSP, and NDI as our streaming sources. So the Keros is essentially a, a marriage of uh, uncompressed video with 2110 traffic, compressed with your NDI, SCRT, and all that, and also regular baseband. We also have the ability to bring in your traditional SDI inputs into your, into your system. Well, and especially with NDI and everything else, that has been hugely popular yes. over the last year, absolutely. two years, things like that. I mean, it, it's literally been pushed to the max yep, over, over the COVID time of bandwidth. Right. Uh, what are we looking at future compatibility-wise and backward compatibility-wise with NDI 
uh, things like PTZ optics, that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of future, one of the things that we have currently is that we support audio on the 2110 side of things, but one of our roadmap items is we're coming up with Dante support eventually. So on the audio side, we'll support Dante, which is very popular as an audio over IP format for a lot yeah. of these people. In addition to that, we're working on more formats. And again, because we rely on a CPU, GPU based model, any future upgrade is only a firmware update. It doesn't, we don't need to replace chips. We don't need to take it back. All we need to do is push out, push out a firmware update. So it, it works like that. that. That has been one of the most amazing things to see over the last few years is the fact that panels stay the same and everything gets pushed through software. Yes, yes, and it, it makes for a much more upgradable studio solution in the field solution yes. and where what you have in the field is matching what's in the studio, which is so often not the case exactly. in so many, especially small stations, college stations, stuff like that. Um, what is the price point that you're looking at for a unit like this for a broadcast studio? Uh, I think Nicole can help with the pricing part of it. Welcome back, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you. Um, pricing part of it, um, our basic uh, rollout core was 28K, um, and okay. our... Um, 1000 core is 73, but that includes a bunch of actual key options like the canvas key, IO upgrades, wow. um, and um, what was the third one? Uh, yeah, we, we have like, we have, we have, a, we have a bunch of features rolled into the yeah. 1000 that are not included in the early model because uh, we wanted to keep the price point down, and if they don't need anything beyond, say, a 16 by 9 canvas, they don't need the canvas key. So yeah. we're trying to keep that down for, you know, houses of worship or other exactly, smaller companies exactly. that don't, if they don't need something bigger than that for screens, yep. um, then they don't need that feature. And it's great because it mixes any format um, yeah. and in pixels instead of format and resolution. So yeah. no matter what the format or resolution is, it can go out to any screen of any size with the canvas key and without the canvas key. It can go up to 16 by 9 or you know, wow. 4, 3, and up to 16 unique outputs, which is amazing. That is fantastic. Yeah. And especially for, like you were saying, small houses of worship, small broadcasts, that kind of stuff, Absolutely. where you don't necessarily need all of the inputs right. that you might need on a major sports broadcast, something Absolutely. along those lines. What's the typical delivery window that somebody's looking at from the time that they order something to when they'd be able to get it in-house? Um, well, that definitely varies because we build everything out specifically for that person's needs. So mm. we tend to work with um, resellers or design groups, make sure it fits their needs sure. so that they get exactly what they want and, uh, and the price point that they want. And we give them solutions that is cost effective that makes it usable so that they if they can't do all the upgrading at once it's future proof so they say oh we can add that in another year when we have the new budget we can add yeah. this feature or that feature so yeah. we give it to them in stages so they can have it whenever they need it or want it basically absolutely well thank you so much for taking the time where can everybody go to find out more about Panasonic where can they go to place their order uh, there is the Panasonic website, of course, on Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, which is the lovely Greek word for the moment that you make a decision in time, um, opportune moment. Um, oh. And uh, this is definitely an opportune moment for this software-defined uh, processing. It's Absolutely. It's a great system. So, well, yes. thank, thank you so thank much you for, for taking, taking the time. The time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you so much. thank you so much for all the work that Panasonic always does for the industry and has done for years. So, great. We'll be right back with you uh, with more technology from the TAB 2021 conference. We are here at the Roland booth right now with Chris Wissinger. That's correct. Uh, tell us a little bit about, I've always loved the format of Roland mixers. They're always so straightforward, straight in, straight out. Tell us a little bit about the new models that you guys have coming out and some of the new technology from Roland this year. Yeah, sure. So we have uh, two new products we're showing today. Uh, we'll start out with our new V160 HD. It is uh, eight HDMI inputs, eight HDMI uh, and eight SDI inputs, uh, and three HDMI and three SDI outputs. So it's, oh, it's, wow. it's got a lot of uh, I.O. 
um, very flexible for any type of application, broadcast, live event. Um, we have, uh, so that's brand new. Um, we're also showing off our brand new uh, P20 HD, which is uh, an affordable uh, slow motion instant replay device, oh, hardware wow. based. So typically on the market right now, most of the slow mo instant replay requires um, highly sophisticated computers, tens of thousands of dollars, yeah. a lot of uh, technical know how. Um, so we've we've built that into a really compact, uh, affordable solution. And then what we just introduced uh, last week was we now have annotation or telestration capabilities with it, oh, with the Wacom wow. tablet. Um, and this can work with any switcher, even whether it's ours or you just want to integrate um, slow motion instant replay into your existing workflow. Yeah, yeah. Totally works. Well, and especially like here in Texas, high school football, oh, yeah. things like that, to be able to have that, like my family's from Katy. They got jumbotrons yeah. at their, at, yeah. like it's a full broadcast facility. So to be able to implement something like this in the field there is fantastic. What's the price point on something like this in the delivery time? So it's available now uh, it's, and it's around uh, $3,000. Wow, that is absolutely affordable. Yeah, it's, it's and crazy. Uh, what kind of integration are you talking about? Is there any kind of software? Is it fully hardware based? Fully hardware Just based. Just plug and play, take yep. an output from a mixer, yep. and then loop it back loop through? Loop back in, yep, correct. Wow, wow. Yep. That is... Yep, and then with support with two Wacom tablets, Wacom 1 and the, and the Click 16. Okay, yeah, and that's for all the... Going John John Madden, all that kind yep. of stuff, yep. doing all arrows on screen. Yeah, which we're showing here. Yeah. Today, yep. That is absolutely phenomenal. What an amazing price point to be able to put in, like I said, at any high school yeah. would be able to afford that. Yeah, and I know there was a recent uh, rule passed here in the state of Texas for high school football yep. to go live streaming now. Yep. So uh, now's the time. <laughs> that is a game changer for it that is, because, literally. yeah, they, yeah. the commissioner did just announce that yep. full live streaming is available for high school football events, high school sporting events, stuff like that. So it's going to be a game changer here in the state for yep. this industry. Um, where can people go to find out more about Roland? Where can they go to keep up with the latest? Where can they go to order their new PD twenty HD? Sure. Well, they're or available. PD20 HD. Yeah, they're available at all of our uh, authorized resellers. Um, there's several across the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and follow us on. Uh, you can go to our website, uh, proav.roland.com. Great. Thank you so much, okay. Chris. I appreciate the time today. All right. Just one of many things here at the Texas Association of Broadcasters Trade Show. If you've never had an opportunity to stop by and check it out, you really should. It is a world of absolutely amazing technology when it comes to broadcasting, live streaming, everything else. Right after this, we'll be right back with more vendors, folks. We are here with Neil Perchik. Perchik, yeah. Uh, with RCS audio software. Uh, tell us a little bit about your streaming software, what it does for online radio stations, things like that, Neil. Sure. So this is uh, Zeta, which is our automation system, and it's used in both terrestrial and online stations. Okay. Um, it's a multi-user, um, multi-station system. You can have one station on it, or you can have a thousand stations on it. Oh, wow. And it's so, all completely integrated. Those stations can be in one location or in multiple locations. So this is all IP-based, everything else. Uh, you're basically, like you're saying, able to run stations in Milwaukee, Poughkeepsie, and New Mexico all at the same time from one location. Correct. Yes. So for master control, this is pretty incredible stuff. It is. Um, how long has it taken you all to develop this, and what is the implementation like for existing systems already? Um, it's, it's in uh, several thousand stations around the world. Uh, RCS is a global company. We have uh, okay. 19 offices around the world. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a very simple, uh, it, it's very simple to, to deploy. Um, we have a capability called site replication where we can literally replicate site A to site B. So if we install site A and then site B, they talk to each other within a day, they're, they're in sync and all of the content is everywhere. And you can do that wow. to multiple locations. So Sirius XM is on us um, and we replicate all of their sites all over the globe. 
Oh, wow. That's pretty incredible to know that you can actively just take a station as, as it exists, page by page in a database, and just replicate it like that and, and be able to push it out. And the, and the uh, amazing thing is we, we now can replicate to our cloud-based disaster recovery system. So we can replicate all those stations to the cloud. If anything happens to the station on-prem, uh, the cloud can take over literally with a switch of a of a, of a URL uh, um, command, wow. and that station can then broadcast from the cloud back to a transmitter or on the web. Wow, so almost zero downtime active. Almost zero downtime. And is all of this mobile compatible for those systems engineers that are mobile? Yes, we, we have a um, uh, HTML-based remote control um, uh, uh, for, for all of our products, but for Zeta, we call it Zeta to go. It's you, you could go up on your tablet or your phone, and you can do a, about eighty percent of what you can do on the software remotely on your phone. Wow! Wow! So you can even broadcast live on, on on your phone or tablet. That's great, especially for news stations, talk stuff like that. Even things like this, if you're running a tech network, Absolutely. anything like that. Now, what is the price point? for the software, and are there are there different variations of the software, different levels of service? Uh, not really different levels of service, it's modular, so you can okay. buy what you need and you can expand on it as you need it, so you can get in at a very low price point. Okay. And then go as large as you want. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really a competitive product within the industry. It's not uh, more expensive than, than our competition, and again, it's really customized to the individual purchaser. That's pretty incredible. We don't have any pro type of pro proprietary hardware, so you can buy whatever, you know, as long as it meets the spec. Uh, we do sell hardware, but it's not the main focus of our business. Sure, sure, absolutely. I mean, it, as far as integration with existing systems, even those stations that are just making that digital switch sure. now, uh, what are what kind of implementation are they looking at? How long does it take from delivery to setup, typically, to get the system up and running? For a simple system, it's a matter of a couple of weeks between um, a purchase and, and installation. The average installation with training can be anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks, depending on how large of an installation it is. Um, but we handle everything. We, we do the conversion for you, we do the, the install and we do the training. So wow. it's very hands-on. We actually can do it remotely now. So we can actually install, we can send you the hardware and remotely... Uh, remote training. Remote and, training and remote yeah. install. So it's really up to the customer. But uh, well, we, that's, that's we were, pretty we were very agile during uh, COVID to be able to do that. Everybody had to become very agile and really had to figure out what that customer service link was because, yeah, on-site visits just were not happening. Right. And now, where can people go to find out more about RCS Sound Software? Where can they go to get their copy? Where can they go to transition their station over to you? Absolutely. So uh, go to rcsworks, W-O-R-K-S dot com. And uh, from there, you can uh, look at what uh, whatever region of the country you're in. You'll find your salesperson. Contact them directly. Um, there's lots of information there. The other thing that we've done is um, we have an academy set up for online academy for our software. So if you're a Zeta user or a G selector or music scheduling user, you can uh, get certified at the, uh, on the online academy and put that on your resume, but it gives you that extra level of training. Yeah, that's uh, fantastic. Well, especially for college stations, stuff like Absolutely. that, you know, people that are in uh, RTF programs, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. It's really great to be able to walk out with the certification, not just like, I, I went to school and I learned how to move some faders. Exactly. You're actively walking out with a system certification with something in the industry. Absolutely. So. We, we actually have uh, uh, several universities that have it as part of their curriculum. So That's fantastic to hear. Well, where can people go to find out more and to get their copy of the software, Neil? Uh, it's sold directly through our salespeople. So uh, rcsworks.com, W-O-R-K-S.com. Uh, and uh, they'll find their, their, their salesperson there. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. This is absolutely great to see. Take care. We 
are here with George Horton from Solid State Logic, an industry leader in the world of audio, whether it's live, studio production, home studio production. Tell us a little bit, this is a beautiful console that we have here in front of us. Tell us a little bit about it and some of the new technology coming out from Solid State Logic. Well, I, I can't tell you everything new, otherwise I'll have to kill you, obviously. But well, sure. I'll, I'll tell you the things I can tell you. Thank you for being here. Nice Absolutely. To see you. Um, so this is this here is our is our broadcast console, System T. Um, System T is a suite of products. Uh, the key to them is they're network based, so everything is IP. Everything is an IP link that ties everything together, which in our last year or so has come in super handy because of remote production. Yep. It, we can distribute elements of control and audio across wide areas, so it's been a huge bonus. So, so we are a true network device as opposed to something that has a gateway into a network. Yeah. Um, it is. It, it's very scalable. Um, we just announced a new engine last week called the TE1 or the TE2. It's a very scalable in terms of how much processing the engine provides. Currently, uh, so that goes from like 140 paths. A path is an input channel or an output bus. So mix minuses or master buses or stems. Um, any bus can be any format up to 7.1.4. So for people who need to do immersive production, mm -hmm. we, can count, we can do that natively. Um, it scales from zero faders, so it can be entirely glass interface, just a touch screen or production yeah. automation, to as many faders as you like with multi-operator positions. It doesn't matter, it's the same software, it's, that's purely a function of the workflow and also uh, the, the, sort of the, 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 the budgets and the footprint available sure. and things like that. So, so, so the software for the smallest to the largest is exactly the same. We scale the amount of processing, the amount of I.O., and then the 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 uh, the the, uh, the control surfaces and things. Well, yeah, and I mean, especially since it's a true network device, the fact that you could have numerous of these in one location running different, uh, like for example, the Olympics, having audio from different places coming into each unit and their workstation being pushed to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the largest facility we have currently has 8,000 I.O. with four, wow. uh, four or five control rooms. Um, so that's a lot of I.O. Now, now the, the key to it is this, is, is, is standard network switches. Yeah. So, so it, yeah, we use Cisco, HP, Ubiquiti. Um, and, and the key is that our router is the switch. In, traditionally in audio consoles, people have used TDM routers to yep. shuffle audio. Uh, and, and that is an sort of hardware intensive and can be inexpensive and, and, and limiting in terms of scale. Um, it, one of these switches, that's a 10 port Cisco switch, that's capable of 512 channels of audio per port, 10 ports, that's 5,000 by 5,000 router. And it costs a couple hundred dollars, you know? Yeah. And so bigger switches, more bandwidth, you can do vast numbers. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Just by adding more switches, you can add more units, everything else. And that is a very cost-effective solution to be able to do that. Yeah. And, and as, as it's an industry standard, I mean, a network is agnostic to the data that travels across it. So so we use Dante, if you're familiar with Dante. As Absolutely. Our, as, uh, which is a full-stack technology. So Dante has the ability to transport audio. It also has the discovery mechanisms. It has the control mechanisms. So I can control, say, my mic pre from the control surface. Um, and, and we have that embedded into the software. So we have the Dante API. Uh, and we, we can then do all of our routing and everything from the console. So an operator goes, I want a microphone on a channel, and it makes the route for them across that network. Um, and it's saved and it's stored. So if you go back again, you want to load the morning news or the five o'clock show or whatever, it will rebuild the whole network for you. You don't need to go into an ornate controller and rebuild those elements. So yeah. for an operator, it's very user-friendly. And um, we also support SMPTE 2110, AES 67, and we can run a converged network uh, where they're running on the same switch fabric, uh, or we can run them as a separated, isolated networks at the same time, and we have some of the SMPTE 2110 routing built into the, into the system as well. Well, and especially having this in a system where you have sub-studios, that kind of stuff, you could have a master control operator be able to tie into any one of them at any time absolutely. and control them by a distance. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of what I got on this PC over here. I'm running the offline, online software, which is a network device. It is logged in currently to this console, 
Uh, and so I could have that physically within the same local area network, or I could have it on the other side of the country. Uh, yeah. and, and it would be, uh, it's, it's routable and it can be controlling it from anywhere. And that's a full, I mean, it could be, a, it could be as simple as a PC. It could be a fully blown control surface thousands of miles away. And, and now, of course, it depends on the copper in between everything else. But what is the typical latency between remote stations, things like that? that that's a function of the, of the hardware you're using. Sure. Um, but we, we are, we've been doing testing between New York and Los Angeles. And we're running at about, um, I mean, in terms of a control latency, it's about 60 milliseconds or something like that. Wow, that is, that's pretty phenomenal. It is pretty incredible. And, and, and honestly, it, it, it is very usable as well. I mean, and you can yeah. get lower latencies as well, but we're doing it across, you know, uh, it, it isn't a particularly uh, uh, high bandwidth network and things yeah, yeah. like that, you know. So, so yeah, it, it, it's not it, like it's a hard fiber connection no, between exactly the two points, like, a, like it would be on a broadcast site, well, something like yeah, that. or a campus, or a, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, so absolutely. So it's very possible, um, and, and I mean, I think we all had to learn new things last year. And uh, you know, every cloud has a silver lining, maybe, yeah. uh, and uh, so we did that. So yeah, so that's the sort of technology. So that's the system T. We also do the live consoles, which is which is. Yep the same underlying technology um, and one of the keys to what we do is, is, is this Tempest System T is Tempest engine it is a patented multi-core processor so the different sizes of consoles are based on the amount of multi-cores we use so okay. it, again it's not using hardware like a, a shark processor or an FPGA it's yeah. purely coded into, into a multi-core standard uh, chipset so, so. that is phenomenal I mean I, I would expect nothing less from SSL they, they once again industry standard and known for some of the best quality products out there you're too kind sir. What are, well I mean it's, it's just a fact <laughs> uh, what are you looking at price point wise to get into a system like this and what are you looking at as far as install time from the point of ordering to uh, what's your typical turnaround to having one put in uh, well obviously very good value of course extremely good value but I mean we're, we're in the in the market from say 35,000 to as big as you like basically because sure. we can build massive systems yeah. um, and so I mean you know a, a typical um, station like you know uh, sort of you know I don't know a smaller news operation and things like that we're somewhere between 50 and 100 maybe yeah. getting a bit bigger we're 150 ish so it, dep it depends on three factors size of control surface size of engine amount of IO flavor of IO how much of it how you know SDI MADI AES all those sort of things sure um, you know in terms of we build everything in Oxford England our factory uh, lead times are sort of six to ten weeks basically oh, wow. um, worldwide logistics are a bit messed up nowadays at the moment so one of the things that's, where it used to take us a week to air freight from England to here because there are less planes crossing the Atlantic that can stretch to a couple of weeks now while we wait for space on planes but yeah. you know, that's the world we live in now yeah yeah that's just to be expected with any install at this point yeah, yeah. but I mean that is an absolutely great price point for any house of worship any college broadcast station any, any station that's small or local yeah, absolutely, because it does scale, uh, and particularly if people can use Dante, because the minimum, the system as standard comes with 512 Dante channels. Wow. So if you have an existing Dante network, you can just plug it in and it works. Yeah, that, and, and that's thousands great. of products that will work with that. So. That's great. Well, where can everybody go to keep up with the latest from Solid State Logic? Where can they go to talk to you, George? Where can they go to order <laughs> their version of the SSLI? Well, um, so we, we, are, we have offices in, in New York and Los Angeles. I'm based in Los Angeles. Um, and obviously, www.solidstatelogic.com has all the links to our offices. Uh, call us directly, um, and we're happy to direct people. I mean, we do the, the live sound, we do the, yep. the, the, the broadcast, and we have our music products, which go through also other traditional dealers. Uh, and so there is a lot of activity in that area as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time on this busy, busy t <laughs> Texas of Association of Broadcasters event. Thank so, you for coming to see us. I really appreciate it. And, absolutely. Uh, I love, love chatting. It's awesome. Most definitely. Have a great day. And you too.
I am here with John Lackness with Elenos Group. Uh, they are a broadcast solution company. Tell us a little bit about the technology that you all have over at your company. You bet, Chris, and, and then thanks for coming by and, and seeing us today. The company's actually been around since the late 50s. Uh, it started out in radio broadcasting, the AM and FM transmitters. We branched out uh, recently. We were bought out by a group out of Italy called the Elenos Company. Uh, we now are in big into uh, uh, radio automation software. We have uh, specialized signal processing. We have audio processing for uh, for FM radio. Uh, we have smaller uh, power level uh, FM broadcast transmitters and up to about 30 kilowatts. And then we have a line of uh, AM uh, transmitters as well. The uh, there, There's actually two groups. There's one is the Elenos Group and then the other company is Broadcast Electronics. That's the one that's been around since the 50s. They're big in the HD radio business. And that's basically what we do in, in, in a nutshell. Uh, and it's been interesting to see the the marriage between analog and digital and the transition over to digital in the world of radio, uh, even as a podcaster to see that like, they're kind of chasing our coattails in some ways. Um, what are some of the broadcast solutions that y'all are providing now for local stations, smaller stations, college stations, things like that. I mean, as far as the, the, the podcasting is concerned, or, or helping, a, well, as far as radio is concerned in yeah. general, you're, you're right about the, the podcasting because the, the, the podcasting has is starting to meld a little bit into broadcast because you see the jocks who are doing yeah. stuff on the air and their podcasting getting involved with all this. Uh, there's a variety of stuff that's out there. I've used a lot of it myself. And uh, it, it, it's it's kind of one working uh, with e with each other. It, there's not there's not uh, so much per se a the broadcast is working against the broadcasters as it used to be. Now we're all trying to work together and make it make it better, a more viable solution. Because podcasting's yeah. huge compared to radio now. Well, well, and even the fact of over the over the time of COVID, the number of people that have started. Uh, online radio stations, that kind of stuff. Uh, like you were saying, the whole HD side that right. Broadcast Electronics covers. Right. Uh, what kind of integration tools do y'all have for smaller stations, local stations, colleges, that kind of stuff? Well, it, a lot of the, the HD implementation depends on not only where the station is located, but also there are spacing requirements that are allowed by the by the FCC. We do have a, 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 a full line of equipment that uh, if a college university uh, determines that they can go HD or they need to in order to have the sub-channels for use by uh, maybe other educational venues or maybe by community, we can supply them that equipment in order to uh, cover the area. And, uh, and coverage is, uh, is varied depending on the amount of power that they are allotted by the FCC. So, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it, as, as needed, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. So this is definitely more for people that or beyond the pirate radio realm Absolutely. And, and going to a much larger world. That, exactly, because this is all licensed type equipment. The, yeah. the pirate radio, it's, it, it, to me, it's always going to be around, and we, everybody deals with it, and, uh, um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, there will always be some guy on a ham circuit out there mashing a microphone and doing something. But, 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 <laughs> but po po podcasting is, is interesting because you have so, people with so many different opinions and talk about. They can really get yeah. micro into their community or into a region. And I've always been fascinated by podcasting and getting ready to start something out about yeah. the, about equipment myself here before too long. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a wonderful venue. Well, tell us a little bit about this rack of gear that you have over here because this is beautiful stuff. Yeah. Well, we're going to start down at the bottom. This is our new line. This is the Broadcast Electronics Television Transmitters. Okay. And we have, there's a new... It's called well. It's called ATSC three, and this is going to be the next uh, the next uh, iteration of television. It's going to be, you're going to have so many more channels that you're able to do than yeah. today because now you have like uh, say like channel five dot one five dot two. Yeah. You're not only going to have that up to multiple channels, but you're going to have data casting. You're going to have uh, audio. You're going to have so many different things you're going to be able to do. And so this is part of what this does. We go from this small transmitter up to you know those that are this size and larger. And right above it is a 500-watt FM transmitter. 
the 500 watt is uh, one of the lower end and it's used by the smaller FM stations and we go up to much larger. Audio processing, mainly for, for FM, not so much for uh, for podcasting or, yeah, or streaming yeah. type of stuff because that's, that's a whole different animal right there. It is. There. Uh, these are the microwave systems that are used to get uh, what we call STLs or studio to transmitter links. Uh, the Marty line has been around since about 1960 and when you go to a radio station it's a generic term. It literally is a generic term. Yeah, it is. It's the Marty. Yeah. And so everybody knows what it is. And then this is just a part of our GUI as far as our our, our radio. And then I have another one up here for our, our television up here, which uh, which, oh, wow. sh which shows the, the IOs for the television transmitter. As we see, we don't have an input uh, going in right now. But I can take, and if something fails, I can find... Uh, I can find uh, something that's gone bad. I can grab it. I can pull it down. Oh wow! And, and open up specific things that are happening with, within the uh, within each module. So it helps you troubleshoot in case there's a problem. And and I see even here the color coordination of the fact of whether or not things are connected. That gives you a, it, it is at a glance. As as far a as glance. a former systems engineer, that is beautiful to know. You don't have to hop back behind the rig to find out you know, what's going you wrong. Just, you just pull out your you pull out your uh, your iPhone or your Galaxy and you just look and see what the you know what the heck is going on. Yeah, I was going to ask is this available? I mean, of course this is through a normal web browser, but yes. is it available in a mobile format yes, things absolutely. like that for absolutely. station engineers? Yeah, because so many engineers now are at their they're so mobile, they are taking care of 15 or 20 or yep. 30 radio stations. They get a, a, a an SMMP track that goes off and goes, hey, you know, station's having a problem. You can just pop it up and look and say, oh, yeah, okay, I've got a modulator. It's, uh, yeah. it's not acting right, so I need to go check that one. Now, now, is it an option within the system, especially if you have the redundancy in line to be able to live switch things via remote? You can't you to, can't you can't set up a trap to where if, if you see something that fails, it will swap over. Oh wow. So it's, that's it's, fantastic. And that saves everybody. But then that's yeah. that's when you get an email back to your engineer saying, hey, you know, I, I have switched over from transmitter one to yeah. transmitter two. And that that's great to know that you can set in that priority to be able to like alert them that hey, just so you know, while you were out getting some coffee, this happened. You know, ten years ago we wouldn't even have thought that this was even possible. And it, oh, it was it, the it's, dream. It's everything. Yes, it was a absolutely. dream, literally. Because when I was an engineer for, for for radio stations, if a station went off, you were guessing at two o'clock in the morning yep. what was happening, and then that, you wasted hours. And this yeah. is just so much easier. Well, it's it. I mean, even just signal tracing to find out where the problem absolutely. is. Absolutely, you exactly. spend hours. So, and just a little quick thing. This little down here. This is a this is a signal. Uh, um, Device that we can look at the spectrum and see what is going on on the uh, on an FM channel. I'm looking oh, at wow. 104.5, which is what actually what I'm broadcasting over okay. here. But I can look. There's a center carrier at 104.5. There, if I had subcarriers on here, if I was HD, I would be able to see the HD uh, uh, oh, wow. the mask out here. I'm looking here at uh, the modulation. I'm looking at uh, RDS. Uh, there's a whole. Uh, I'm yeah. seeing there's a stereo signal down in the lower right hand corner. There's just a lot of stuff, and I can I can drive around town and look at my competition. So it's really interesting to see what you. Yeah, yeah, you can compare and contrast Absolutely. your signal versus Absolutely. theirs. What's their audio or quality? Or something wrong. That's exactly. that's pretty incredible. Well, John, where can everybody go to find out more about Elenos Group and Broadcast Electronics? Where can they go to start getting into systems like sure. this for their local station? Sure, it's a, the company is Broadcast Electronics, owned by the Elenos Group, and we're a BD Cast. Dot com, uh, or, or my phone number, 210-665-0274. I keep forgetting what it, what it is, but that's okay. my direct number since I handle uh, all the western U.S. from uh, the Mississippi River over. So Great. Well, thank you so much Chris, for taking it. the time. I thank greatly you. appreciate it. Enjoy the rest thank of the you. Texas Association right. of Broadcasters trade show. We are here with Robert Erickson with Grass Valley. How are you doing today? It is absolutely fantastic to be out here with humans, people, interacting, seeing things. I know. It's like half of me just wants to walk up to somebody and like, I think I shake can't. I, I don't know how this works, but you know what? It's great to be out. Yeah, it's like, it's like you're some kind of caveman that's been thought out and brought back exactly. into society. It's been totally strange. It's fantastic. And you know, the fact that it's in Texas and it's TAB is probably one of the best venues we can do it because... 
it's a good sized conference. There's really good people here. It's a great chance to show off technology. A lot of the vendors who haven't done, done trade shows in a year, year and a half, are showing technology that they would normally never show at TAB. You know, yeah. normally we would hold this off for NAB or we'll hold it off for IBC. But, you know, us and some other vendors are showing some new tech that normally isn't shown here. So I think it's good for the people in Texas. I think it's great yeah. for TAB. So I think it's a good opportunity. Absolutely. Well, speaking of which, tell us a little bit about some of the new technology coming out from Grass Valley, one of the literal industry leaders yes. in broadcast technology. Hey, thank you for the compliment. Absolutely. I'll gladly take that. Um, speaking of industry leaders, though, this is the next step in broadcast technology. So what we're showing here is part of the Grass Valley Media Universe. It's called GVM. And it's the concept of taking traditional technologies. When you think of Grass Valley, you think of a, a hardware switcher. Or when you think of Grass Valley, you think of hardware processing. You think of the ability yep. to do the entire workflows of your entire TV studio um, is what Grass Valley does. So what we've done and what we're showing here is GVM, where we've taken all the functions of traditional hardware and we've converted them into CPU and GPU resources. So this entire show you're seeing right here between our audio console we have over here running on the left, we have the multivere, and we even have a switcher running right here. All of this is running in Amazon AWS in Portland of all places. Wow. So you see the big traditional switcher panel? You know, when people think of Grass Valley, they think of the panel. They know they know how to use the panel. That's how you interface with the switcher. Except for the switcher doesn't exist. It literally is an AWS instance running in Portland. So I've got 32 inputs to the switcher. 16 outputs to the switcher. I've got the, tr the keyers that everybody's are used to. Everything everybody's used to doing on a switcher, working the exact same way they expect, just running in AWS. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and now, granted, even the fact that you have the quality going on a video flow at a convention yep. with just a local internet connection, yep. that is, that's pretty incredible. That is actually where some of the secret sauce is, is anybody can get video from point A to point B. Sure. But it's how do you get it in the lowest delay possible? Because if you're on a switcher, if I poke a button and on the switcher and I've got to wait a second or two for my really high compression ratio yep. compression and all this kind of stuff to hit, well, you can't, it's not usable. So a lot of our secret sauce, a lot of the innovation we brought to this is the fact that I can use a, literally a trade show wired internet wild feed. I'm not using yeah. an NPLS. I'm not using a tunnel. This is just a yep. straight wild feed. And I'm able to do an entire production with extremely low delay is part of the revolutionary technology. Because the whole goal is, is to make this work and seem and look like the switchers in the same room. Yeah. When the reality is it's a piece of software instantiated somewhere in the world that nobody cares about. Yeah. And it's it's been pretty incredible over the last couple of years to really see the network capabilities take off in the industry, yep. to see the capabilities of things like this happen. What kind of latency are you talking about, even on a network like what you're dealing with right now? I'm just talking a few hundred milliseconds, like a hundred milliseconds. You know, wow. We're not talking 500 milliseconds, half second delay. Um, I mean, yeah. I know we're on video, so I don't know if we can do a tight shot on that or not. Sure. But I can actually just show you, so I got my preset program. Wow. 100 milliseconds, maybe 150 well, milliseconds. If even. If even, If yeah. even. That was pretty um, seamless switching. And that's the whole idea. And the magic, the secret sauce on this is my switchers here, all of my sources are coming in from around the world. My sources are from SRT sources in Los Angeles. And, yep. Uh, H.264 RTMP streams in Montreal, and I got a server here in Portland. I'm pulling in sources from all around the world, switching them in Portland and sending that feedback. If you notice, that's a Chrome browser. Mm -hmm. This isn't a, a heavyweight multi-viewer. This isn't anything. This is all done in software in Portland in the AWS cloud. So you're seeing these kind of late, you know, these kind of very low latency, very deterministic switches. That's the secret sauce. And so when you talk about Grass Valley innovating moving forward, this is what we're bringing to the table. This is something nobody yeah. else is doing right now. Well, and even even the fact of, like you were saying, your sources coming from various networks across the globe. Including this live view pack we have here. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's absolutely phenomenal to know that with almost no latency, you can be switching cameras from all over the globe. Yep. And all anybody needs is a standard internet connection. They don't yep. need fiber optic, they don't need any kind of crazy pipeline or exactly dedicated it. pipeline. I mean, if you want to do a crazy dedicated pipeline, go for it. You can. We can get you know the, the latency even a little bit lower. Yeah. Uh, but most modern workflows now is over wild internet connections. You know, be it, yep. be it a live view pack going over bonded cellular, be it a cable modem, be yeah. it whatever this hotel has. Yeah. Um, that's the goal. That's a good way to put that. Whatever this hotel has. Because yeah. you never, ever know. No. It's pretty rare and even sometimes the specs that you get from a location I deal in the world of corporate AV. This is what I'm normally doing is yep. the events like what you're attending. 
and so frequently you get specs from house and you show up and you're like, well, these aren't the specs at all. at all. This right. may have been what it was when it was built, but it ain't what it is now. So our backup for here, which we actually tested, um, <laughs> is an AT&T hotspot. Yeah. Um, I've got the pretty decent AT&T coverage here. This isn't an ad for AT&T. It's just one I'm using. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we actually were testing failovers. You know, the hotel yep. internet went down. Our, uh, our router automatically switched over to the AT&T hotspot, and we're still able to pull the production off. Wow. And so, what was your latency when you went to Hotspot? Uh, it jumped up a little bit uh, because our sure. coders had to do, uh, we had to squeeze a little more. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I went from, I'm using about a 10 meg constant stream here. I had to bring it down to a 5 meg constant stream, which means I had to do a little more compression on it. Sure. So it went up by like maybe 30 milliseconds. Not oh, very wow. much. Not, a, not an incredible impact at all no. to functionality. Nope. So now, as far as station wise and mobile wise, what, what is somebody looking at? A price point to be able to get into a system like this. Straight OpEx model. That's the best part. So, um, you, you, whatever hardware you need to buy to get the signal into the software environment is your is your fixed cost. Everything else is a monthly OpEx cost. Wow. So, if you want to, you know, if you think about a, a production switcher, for example, I mean, I'm just yep. using this as an example. But you think about a production switcher. Somebody buys a switcher. They produce maybe, what, two hours a day, maybe a news station, eight hours a day of content? Sure. The rest of the time, the switcher sits in the rack using power and doing nothing. I've got two of them sitting in a box at home. So you, you absolutely get that. Yeah. So the whole model on this, the whole the, the, the commercial model on this is, you know what? You need that switcher for 30 minutes. You need that switcher for two hours or eight hours. You spin it up. You use it for what it is. When you're done, you shut the whole thing down, and it doesn't cost you a dime when it's shut down. Yeah. And so... Uh, it's a straight OpEx model. It's a it's a pay as you use, pay as you go model. You can you know it's it's monthly or however you know. There's all sorts of different ways we can do it, but it's moving things into a commercial model where you can say I'm going to make this much money doing this production, but I know what my costs are to do the production, so you can kind of set your business model accordingly. So you could do all of this in a virtual environment without even including a console, is what you're 100%. saying. 100. So I, we have the console here because so many people know and love well, the Grass Valley you, interface. You can't, you can't not love a Grass Valley. It's, it's here, but if I just click over wow. to this tab, there's my entire switcher and software. So if somebody doesn't want to have the console, if they don't want to yeah. pay for this, if they want to be able to have all the power and, of this console and yeah. the software interface, and I'm sure they could go through and macros program any USB controller in the world that they wanted to to yep. it, all kinds of stuff. So yep. you could use your familiar mixer that you already have, what have you. It's actually, I'm really glad you brought that up. Thank you. Like, I just, You're welcome. Up. You've never seen this product, but this audio console I showed you, um, we've got a couple, of hundred a couple of hundred inputs and quite a few outputs. When we did this audio console, the first thing people said is, I want a tactile interface. I want yep. to be able to move a slider. Got to be able to move a fader and EQ yeah. stuff with my fingers. So, but how do you do that when the console is sitting in software in AWS or in yeah. Azure? So we actually wrote a MIDI interface. So if you have a traditional, I don't care if it's a, just yep. a little Mackie or a Behringer. Any, yeah, any, any USB controllable or interface. anything MIDI controllable. Yeah. Ooh, so, even better. Yeah, anything that's got a MIDI control. So we can actually make it so when I turn a fader up on here, MIDI control, you'll see the fader come up on the console. You do the fader there. The fader That's will come great. Up on here. Yeah, it'll run motorized faders, everything. And so we you. give a tactile interface to um, something running in the cloud. And that's the, one of the differentiators is, is how you got to focus on the user interface. When an operator sits down in front of an audio that's console, it. does he care that the audio console is running a bunch of CPU and FPGA or CPU and GPU or DSP? They don't care. Yeah. They know that when they sit down in the interface and they pot up something and they turn down the mix minus and they set their mixes, that it just bloody works. Yep. And that is our goal. We're focused on the UI and abstracted the the processing, the everything out of the background. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's just it. You made it to where anybody can use their familiar console with your equipment, yep. and that's that's pretty incredible. So. Where can everybody go to find out the latest and greatest from Grass Valley? Where can they go to order this product to become part of the chain? GrassValley.com obviously is the, the the waypoint on that. If you want to talk to anybody, you want to find somebody, hit up that website. Uh, I'm Robert Erickson. Um, my email address is literally robert.erickson at grassvalley.com. Okay. I'll go, you can always hit me up on there. Um, but anywhere in the United States, if you go on the website, they can tell you where to find somebody locally. And if for any reason anybody has a problem, literally email me personally and we'll take care of it. Great. Well, Robert, thank you so much for taking the time and thank you to Grass Valley for always doing what they've done for the industry for years which is just putting out great products so yes, stay tuned for more from the Texas Association of Broadcasters trade show right after this we are here with John Landman the vice president of sales for Teradec uh, tell us a little bit about some of the great new products coming up from Teradec I've used Teradec on site on 
I don't know how many shoots that I have done in the corporate realm, things like that, where we are going long distances and do not want to have to use cables, amplifiers, things like that. So uh, y'all have some great solutions for the world of broadcast video. Uh, tell us a little bit about your new products. Well, I think you gave a, a really good presentation of Thank one you. of the sides of our business, mm -hmm. which is uncompressed wireless transmission. Yep. What I have on the show today is our latest transmitter that it has the ability to transmit uncompressed 4K video up to 5,000 feet. Wow! Yes, I, I, I do believe we are the only company in the world that can do that. Uh, anyone else that I've seen is actually compressing it. Yeah. So, so that makes us very, very unique. Um, and, and we're very, very uh, I'm excited just, to show that. I'm literally flabbergasted to even, <laughs> think about the fact, to, to even think about the fact that you would even be consider, considering sending compressed video 5,000 feet wirelessly is amazing to begin with. But so, uncompressed so, video 5,000 feet is phenomenal. And, and with no delay. Yeah. Well, explain to us at least as much as you can. I don't want you to get into sure. anything proprietary, sure. but... Uh, how has this been perceived by the industry so far? How has it been received? Well, as you're probably aware, there's been a massive movement within the cinema industry to move from you know, 1080p into the 4K world. You, yeah. really, you really can't shoot anything nowadays that's not in 4K. Yeah. So having the ability to actually monitor what you are shooting, um, it's important to see it in that highest quality possible. Uh, not just that we transmit 4K, but we also transmit HDR, which in some industries is more important than 4K, especially yep. in the broadcast world, right? Yes, absolutely. They're, they're, taught, they're, they're wanting to stay in the 1080p world, but doing a lot more in HDR. Mm -hmm. So that's you know something that uh, you know we are proud to be to be able to support. What we also have is a, a Ranger product that you're probably not familiar with, but that actually has the ability to transmit it not just in the 5.8 band, but actually 4.9 to 6 bands. Oh, wow. So if you're going into um, a more challenging environment, such as a football field or a basketball yep. tournament, you know, that makes us very, very popular there too. That's something that we deal with in the corporate environment all the time in structures like this. You're always in downtown. You're swathed by television signal, wireless transmission, Wi-Fi signals. I mean, it's a constant net of information that is covering everything nowadays, spectrum-wise. Uh, how are you guys competing with that, with this technology? As I mentioned, we do use the unlicensed 5.8 band, but we use multiple frequencies and, and, and enable frequency hopping within the systems. So they self-negotiate with other wireless networks okay. in order to attain the best possible connection in the area that you're in. Wow, that's pretty incredible to know that it's automatically switching, automatically moving from frequency to frequency. So many things like that are fixed frequency where if you get a, get a competing signal, you got to go through and change your receiver, change the transmitter. Yeah, if, if you actually dig into the menus uh, and open up the app that's used to control these, you'll actually see that there's a spectrum analyzer built into the app. Oh, it's wow. actually quite interesting t looking at the different uh, uh, other frequencies that are available and are used, and it shows you exactly how we are jumping them from where to where. It, it, it's you know one of the added benefits of using our system. Um, another thing that we are showing here is our encoder range of products. Okay. Which um, I'd like to show here. Th sure. Th this is uh, the new Cube 4K encoder that takes in uh, our video feeds and then allows us to stream up to our cloud management system that allows you to then stream that to an unlimited number of destinations at the same time. Oh, wow. Yeah, we recently did 100 Facebook pages from a single encoder. Wow. So, yeah. That's pretty incredible. And what is the, what is the entry point on this product? Because that is, that is a great size factor, and um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the fact that Teradek uses so much metal. <laughs> in their construction, I'm, yeah. as a technician, as someone yeah, who lives his life on the road, feel that. Like it, that's just it. They are built like tanks, yes, and so light. 
it's it's incredible. Uh, what's the price entry point on your encoders? The encoders uh, at the moment are starting at around uh, twenty five hundred bucks. Wow! Yeah, so so that really makes it very cost effective to yeah. get into into streaming. Um, you know, the last count we've been around for about ten years, uh, focused very heavily on the encoder market, and we've deployed about 190,000 of these encoders. Wow. I often get people come up to me at trade shows and say, oh, I have one of your cubes. I put it on a rack, you know, seven years ago, and it's still there. Yeah. You know, it's still running. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's just it. There, there's, there are numerous brands in the industry, especially for on-the-go equipment, uh, that just bring quality and lifetime to me. and that. that Things like Electrosonics, Teradec is one of those where when you buy it, you rarely, rarely, rarely have to replace the piece of equipment until it literally just becomes obsolete. Right. And and like not an industry standard anymore as far as video, right. things like that. What kind of uh, warranty are you looking at whenever you purchase Teradec, whenever you're getting into some of the higher end products, things like that? With all of our products, we have a standard warranty of a year, parts and labor. We do have the ability to buy an extended warranty up to a maximum of three years. Okay. Yeah, so we stand behind our products. Yeah. You know, we have support departments uh, in Los Angeles, in Irvine, in the UK, in uh, Florida as well. So, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, we, we have uh, facilities in Irvine. You know, we have a, a, a hundred... 150 people working out of Irvine. We have some people in Dallas, some Raleigh. We, we, you know, we're spread around the, the whole country. Well, and that's great to know because, I mean, it's, it's sometimes really hard, especially if you're technicians out in the field, if you're in a broadcast locally, that kind of stuff, where you can find these things locally. Uh, to know, so to know that y'all are so spread around for service is great. Well, thank you, and uh, you know, thank you for coming by. Today. Absolutely, it's been a pleasure. Tell everybody where they can go to get their TerraDeck products, where they can go to get a hold of you, and to find out more about TerraDeck. Sure, feel free to go to www.teradeck.com. We have a store there; you can buy direct, and we ship worldwide, anywhere from India to Kathmandu, and everything in between. Um, my personal email is john, J-O-N, at teradec.com, but you can also reach any of the sales team at sales at teradec.com. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, and thank you so much for coming out to Texas Association of Broadcasters Trade Show. All right. Time after a year and a half. I know. It's been great to actively <laughs> walk around and see people. I've, I covered CES uh, this last year, and it was one of those, like... You couldn't get more CES than to ask everybody to appear virtually, yes. but these are handshake events. These are events, especially when you're talking about tech and technicians. We we got to feel knobs. We got to we got to feel the way that things move and the button push and yes. you know feeling the construction is so much different. You could give 85 digital presentations yeah, that insane. do not have the impact as somebody holding a Teradec product in yeah. their hand. So it's great to be back at it, and it's great to see folks like you back out at conventions like this. We'll see you at NAB. Absolutely. Take care. Pleasure meeting you. Bye-bye. Once again, just some of the technology available here at the Texas Association of Broadcasters Trade Show. We'll be right back with you after this. We are here at the Sennheiser booth with George Rebecca. How are you doing today, George? I am doing great. How are you guys doing? Doing great. I always love stopping by the Sennheiser booth. This is probably my third or fourth time to cover you guys here at the Texas Association of Broadcasters. Uh, tell us a little bit. I see some new products here that I'm not familiar with. Uh, let us in on a few of your new products that y'all have out from Sennheiser this year. Absolutely. So our newest product is our EWD line. And this is our Evolution Digital. Uh, it is the best sounding thing on the market in its price point. Uh, hands down, you get a lot more. So it has 134 uh, dB uh, wow. dynamic range. So there's no sensitivity needed. Uh, it runs it at 44 megahertz. 
Um, but, or actually not 44, I'm sorry, 56 megahertz, okay. which allows, again, in a perfect bubble, 90 channels, a bank. Sure. You're not going to get that, but sure, sure. still more than anything its price point. And one of the ways we can do this is it has equidistant spacing. Okay. So there is no frequency coordination needed. Oh, wow. Um, unless you're mixing systems, of course. But sure. if you're running all EWD, it syncs via a Bluetooth app. So let me show you. It takes less than a minute. That's to, cool. Uh, to yeah, it, of course, frequency coordination is an issue that we run into. I work in the corporate AV field, and we run into it regularly in environments like this where we have television to deal with, we have local in-house Wi-Fi and radios to deal with, Absolutely. things like that. So to know that if you're coming into a location and using all this system that you have very little of that competition to worry about. Absolutely, and that's and that's kind of the uh, what we're gaining is, is definitely trying to get more uh, you know, as the, the FCC repack happened, yeah. we're getting less and less space to work with, yeah. and we're having to find ways to uh, severely, severely increase that. But with no intermodulation, we, you could put the two transmitters right next to each other, and you're not going to pick up anything on the screen. Wow. And that's what allows us to not worry about the uh, intermod and the, and the harmonic frequency spacings that yep. we have to worry about. So, um, with the Bluetooth app, all you have to do is uh, hold sync. Oh, cool. Three times, and it'll automatically uh, uh, scan. If it's already. That is, uh, that is extraordinarily user-friendly, and to know that you can go around, especially... Uh, in houses of worship where you may have these in numerous locations around, that kind of stuff and, and, that makes that coordination and, and super can, easy. And if it's in Bluetooth range, you don't have to bring the transmitters okay. in front of house. If not, you can also bring your phone after the receivers have been synced and sync them to their transmitters backstage. Wow. Uh, so that's something that we're really excited about that gives you that opportunity to... Uh, uh, really, uh, really. I mean, it's it's. Why buy anything else and stuff today for for a handheld system? Starting at six ninety nine. That's gonna. There's nothing in the market that could touch it. But we will have a, a combo uh, set as well coming out uh, if we if it's not already. But we do have it in, I believe, ten configurations. We have it with a headset, a lav instrument, no mic. Oh wow! Handheld instrument as well. That's fantastic. Yes. And it comes and it's now compatible with all the capsules, even our new 445, 430. Oh wow! Capsules. Wow! And I mean, I've. I've I've used an EW series for, I, I want to say this may be the first broadcast that I have used where I am not using a Sennheiser EW series. Um, I've had them in my go kits for years and years. They are such a venerable product. Um, how, how has the industry received this so far uh, for a replacement? Because, of course, this is your step into the, the digital realm as far as things go. There, there have been numerous other well, manufacturers. We've had, we've had digital in our high end. Our, yeah, our, in our your, 6, yeah, in your broadcast uh, realm things. Uh, but for our, this is our first evolution, you're correct, in digital. And um, it's been great. It's been out a month and, uh, and uh, released it, I believe, July 1st. So okay. a little over a month. Uh, wow. And it has been absolutely great. You know, uh, we're doing um, some other things that we do have um, is kits for uh, uh, audio for video from anything from yeah. uh, kind of your setup. You got a little bit mm -hmm. fancier setup, but we have uh, the MKE 200 yeah. and 400. Oh, nice. Um, that can be mounted to phone, uh, DSLR. I mean, any 
cameras, but still give you that quality shotgun sound yep. of our larger brothers yeah. for a very affordable price. Um, well, and I've actually been interested over the last little bit. I got one and have, have yet to do a video on it. But y'all's new USB-C mic is absolutely incredible. And I was, I was so happy to see that y'all put it out in USB-C format. Not just so many times whenever manufacturers put it, it is the future, but sadly so many people are still in the past and only making such things for Apple products and with those Apple connectors on them. And it's kind of annoying. Um, I'm an Android user, but uh, the well, USB-C format has been fantastic. Well, Apple's new Thunderbolt is USB-C. It is So huge. I yes. have a new uh, Apple laptop, and yeah. it has no USB-A on it. Exactly. And even those devices, I have to get a little adapter, like my mm -hmm. drive, when, yep. when I have to do archaic CD work. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, and, and that's, just you know looking at it, there's not a lot of good sounding mics there are that, not that you can i mean whether it's eighth inch or usb it's good enough to get a job done and, yep and we wanted it's amazing what you guys can do now i mean compared to just five years ago oh, God, yeah. and with with all the the uh, covid and people stuck at home it doesn't mean they can't have good quality that's you know? right and so that's that was a thought process with all this you know yep. i mean people doing podcasts and, and at every level you should have some availability to yeah. something professional yep um, well and that's different price that's just it with everything going usb c you you dropped the headphone jack on most models mm -hmm. So the option of having a TRRS microphone or something like that is totally different. But what's great is that the USB-C also allows you that small amount of power to be able to power a preamp to get that great sound yeah. that that microphone has. And it's, it's, it's a very natural sounding USB oh, microphone. Sounds like for, I've got numerous USB microphones over the many years, numerous USB interfaces. Um, that is by far, hands down, my go-to recommendation for people who podcast on the go, who do virtual meetings, even even with their phone, that do Zoom meetings regularly. Like, pop that in, everybody will love you for the fact that you don't have room compression going on. Um, where can people go to find out the latest and greatest from Sennheiser? Where can they go to get these great new products? Sure. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel, and we do release. Uh, there's videos on all of this, um, um, and we you can buy it from any authorized Sennheiser dealer, which, um, depending on your area, we, we'd be more than happy to help you find if you... Uh, I'm sure you guys could get in touch with you, and, and sure. you can pass them on to us, and I could get them to the areas, whether it's rep or, or I'm a business development manager, and I handle uh, uh, Texas, okay, uh, all the way New Orleans or Louisiana, all the way up to Minnesota. Oh wow! So I'd be happy to help and and have you uh, give my information out too. It's great. Well, for the Fantastic. That needs help. Well, greatly appreciate your time today at a very busy return of the Texas Association of Broadcasters yeah. trade show. Uh, thank you so much for your time today, George. We'll be right back with more from other great vendors right here at the Texas Association of Broadcasters trade show 2021. We are here with Nathan Bossler, the president of Castus. Welcome to the Texas Association of Broadcasters trade show. Tell us a little bit about your awesome tiny, tiny device over here. Thank you, Christopher. So Castus is known for broadcast, upload, schedule, play, and stream. What customers love about our system is you can upload pretty much any file format for your channel, and it will play, no problem. This is a single channel or multi-channel solution. So you can take all your videos and your shows, broadcasters ca capture live games, they capture council meetings, they capture all sorts of meeting content and whatnot. Sure. And using Castus, they can air it live on their channel. They can capture that show while it's happening so that afterwards it can be automatically scheduled and go on the schedule for later playback and rerun. And they can do this and stream it to Fire, Amazon Fire. They can stream it to their website. They can play it to the cable provider. And it does it all out of one box. Wow. And you can do that to multiple channels out of one box. Correct. So we have customers that are managing their public, their education, their government channel, and more than those channels. 
all independently schedulable and independently configurable. It's super easy. And all they have to do is upload, schedule, and the rest is play from there. And is this proprietary hardware and software? How does, how does the system itself work? Yeah, great question. So over the years, growing and learning, we have, we have molded to sell it all in one solution. So you buy our platform, you get all the hardware you need. That includes all the outputs, all the hard drives, the storage, you know, 16, 24 terabytes on on. All that stuff configured for you. You own it, you buy it, you own it. From there, you get to use it however you like. Upload, schedule, play, and then of course we offer great support and updates with our systems as well. And what kind of packages do y'all have? Is this like a package solution where you can get in at a smaller price point for like colleges, that kind of stuff, and then scale up for larger solutions? Yes, absolutely. So of course, higher end broadcast models that are more expensive, but they have more hardware and more processing power. Mm -hmm. Our lower end solutions, a single channel box in Castus land starts around $6,000. Oh wow. Or 9995, roughly 10,000 bucks. And that's footprint size. Both of them are gonna give you all the same features, which is great. Same formats, same overlay capabilities, same scheduling capabilities. It's just the number of channels that's supported in that box. So our little mini solution allows you to have a channel, take an input, stream it to your website, send it OTT, do all that stuff for six grand. That is that is a pretty impressive price point. And even the size of the box itself, let's start getting in to a little bit of the technology that you have over there on the table. Definitely, so Castus has been known to work with a lot of different vendors. And so what I have here is a, one, our friends over at Teradek. Teradek makes this tiny little box called the Cube. Yeah. And what's really cool is our customers can take this little cube out to say a, a high school graduation or, or a football game. And what I have demonstrated here today is I can take my little camera, hook it up to my cube, send that video signal wirelessly over the standard internet. And here today in this hotel, it's not great, but I can still sure. do it, which is amazing. Sure, wireless hotspot, your phone even. You got it. Send that signal back to my playout server at my TV station, and then from there, the castus will receive it without any hardware, which is incredible. Wow. And then redistribute it to and all of your distant de destinations. The no hardware is what I find incredible. The fact that there's no encoder in the middle, there's no, let's grab that it's gonna ingest into a server, that, that literally means that there is no downtime between live signal and broadcast. Correct, correct. So you don't have to also, you don't have to spend that extra $3,000 on the yep. decoder to receive it because the Castus physical server will decode all the signals coming in natively and do all that internally. That is pretty incredible. Now, where can people go to find out more about Castus? Where can they go to sign up to, to get a consultation with you guys about some solutions that they might need? So, of course, visit our website, castus.tv, C-A-S-T-U-S dot TV, like television. Um, or you can Google search, of course, cast us, and it'll bring it to you. We always say, cast me, cast you, cast us. Check us out, give us a call, send us an email, we'll schedule a demo, give you a nice demo. We're also on the road quite a bit here at you know, Texas Association of Broadcasters. We'll be at the WCM, which is in Wisconsin, in October. Yep. We'll be at NAB in October as well. Oh, great. The big show's back. Can't yep. wait to do that. So if you go to our website, you can see a list of shows that are coming up that we'll be attending as well. Fantastic. Well, Nathan, thanks again for the time here at a very busy return of the Texas Association of Broadcasters trade show. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Once again, everybody, just an example of some of the amazing technology that is available every year here at the Texas Association of Broadcasters trade show. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Talking Sound Podcast. Till next time, everybody, take care of yourselves, take care of your hearing, and keep reaching for 11. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Talking Sound Podcast. For more episodes, industry news, and information, visit us online at TalkingSoundPodcast.com. Subscribe to the Talking Sound Podcast on Amazon Audible, Spotify, Spreaker, SoundCloud, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service. Get the latest Talking Sound videos on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Breach TV, or your Roku or Amazon Fire device with the APR TV app. Talking Sound is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts. 
For more great shows and content, subscribe to hcuniversalnetwork.com today. Until next time, watch those meters, gig safely, and keep reaching for 11. This is Talking Sound.